Hi everybody! I've got a 60 minute session that I'm doing for a client, so we're going to be sharing a lot of energy work and wisdom. I'm going to read the goals and then I'm going to be getting started. Okay, goals are, I got injured and lost a job. I feel like I am on the verge of some momentous change in direction in life. I have been mired by confusion in career and life. I ask for your assistance in anything that spirit sees fit and could be helpful in my evolution, be it soul journey energy work, fragment gathering or guidance, physical healing and injury. I'm open to anything to get me in the congruent direction. <laughs> okay. I'm just absorbing in all of the awesome details here. Okay. All right. I'm going to get started now. Okay. Right now, there's just um, what could be described as a pause, okay? But there's movement forward. It's almost like I'm becoming the energy of the air itself and I'm kind of spreading out in every direction and I'm saturating then every direction and I'm doing this very just naturally it feels like it feels like natural for me to do this but because it is just so calm and peaceful it's just it's almost like a, a pause I'm in the midst of a pause as well. It's almost like uh, feeling out every single direction in order to find what it is that I'm looking for. And trying to gather what is out there in every direction and then bring it back to me here. And because the effort of me going to get it is not available it's it has to come to me so I have to grow extra long arms in order to access it and in this space I'm just made out of energy and I'm in an energy space so there's really no air here there's just energy here but the energy is infinite and it goes in every direction forever <laughs> and so my infinite energy arms are just sort of like a paint that is built onto a canvas and it's just slowly creeping in every direction. And so that's my experience of you too, is just reaching out into every direction in order to bring something back to yourself. And it really is specifically you not getting up to get it, but um, you discovering it by reaching out with a different pair of hands and then through these different pair of hands, now it comes back to you, okay? It's almost like this event is teaching you a new way of accessing information, um, expansion, and growth. It's almost like you have to do things in a different direction. And it's kind of nice in a way, the way this feels to me, because it's asking me to, it's not for me to get up and go do that. It's like, I gotta do laundry, gotta go get groceries, gotta do this, gotta do that, gotta do that. But now it's like, it's like that is gonna come to me. That is going to come to me now. So I have to adjust to um, accessing things in a new way, turning life inside out. This is so interesting. I really like the energy because it's it has this infinite patience to it. And what's interesting about infinite time, it feels like a long time, but infinite time is merely a second, it's merely a moment. It depends on how you want to perceive it, okay? So we could perceive the beginning and the end of these infinite arms reaching out um, as taking five years. Or we could see it as 
it, it is happening, it had happened, and it will happen, and all of that happening in a simultaneous moment, that's what's going on here right now. You're mentioning soul fragments, and since we're looking at infinite time, a soul fragment is basically the part of you that gets stuck and attached to something that hurt your feelings or didn't go right, no matter what, no matter what that means. And it could be shame, it could be something somebody did to you or something you did to somebody else, but it's enough that you just, you need, you need more about this. You need more information, you need more perspective, you have emotional attachment to it. So now your soul stays in that moment for all eternity. But it's only staying in that moment for a single moment. And so to bring the soul fragment back to yourself, you go into that moment which is forever. It is forever. So if you have a soul fragment that's, that's stuck in a, um, why did this happen to me? Now your current self is also going to be stuck in a moment saying, why did this happen to me? And now you're stuck in an echo paralleling from one time to another time, which all times are happening simultaneously. So to reconcile that event will help alleviate that echo because it won't exist anymore as though it never did exist, although it always did exist. And it'll give you more of yourself back. It'll bring more back to you. Okay? I feel like I'm supposed to tell you this. Okay. There's just a, there's energy that's just so, coming up here very slowly. I keep thinking of grapes getting smashed, crushed under toes, or maybe boots. Maybe it's dirty grapes. They just smashed grapes. They do, they do not turn into a, a wine. <laughs> it's almost like uh, that gross thing that you see on the floor of your car, and you don't want to touch it <laughs> without a napkin or something. <laughs> or it could be some random like little grape fell and somebody stepped on it and you're seeing it and so you're avoiding stepping in it. Um, there's something about a grape here, a gross grape, crushed grape. And it's bringing some stress up, okay? And it's actually more so not coming from the front so much as it is coming from behind, okay? So it's coming up the back side of you and then around to the front. But it's stress, all right? And I feel it in the face, but more so behind you. Okay. The next thing is I literally am becoming more of who you are. And I'm letting all that energy know that it can relax now. It's such a stifled shout. It's like you ever get so angry but you say nothing. But you don't really have to say anything at all either. And you can just kind of mute it and then just move on. It's like a stifled shout. So it's not like an emotionally attached moment of aggressive self-expression. It was felt, but it was muted. And we're just going to move on. I experience that as I'm slowing things down here. This energy that's coming up around the head and just shows me the gross smashed grape. <sighs> I feel like this should be louder than the way that it's expressing itself. It's actually quite amazing that it's not louder. <sighs> Most human beings would be vulnerable to being loud um, through an event like this or through what this energy movement is about. And, but for some reason you 
you're just going to stifle it and mute it and and sort of bring yourself back into composure it's admirable it's impressive however for there to be the right amount of frequency healing it's got to get a little bit louder okay <laughs> so because it has to be acknowledged it has to be acknowledged louder all right just me saying that you're such a good listener me saying that is uh, creating stress reaction, which is, you're, you're just a good, oh, hold on. Ah. Ah. Hmm. Now we're getting it out, the stifled show, come on now. <laughs> okay, let's see what happens next here. I'm going to help you get this out. I mean, I'm going to help you get this out. All right. Doesn't want to do anything else right now. So we're just going to keep uh, continuing to relax and communicate with your inner self. But you're in a lot of places, like a lot of places. Like you are the water that saturates the infinite. Like you're in a lot of places. You're like the air that is everywhere. Um, you are the infinite time. I mean, you literally are everywhere. And because you're so expansive, expanded, energetically expanded, um, you have a different way of reacting um, than a normal person would. You're different in how you respond to human experiences. <sighs> All right, me again, me just talking to you in your energy feeling. We're getting it's getting dizzy. There's like a two balls. One of them is this metallic and one is black and there's a ring. And they just go around and around. Like the black one is chasing the metallic, the metallic is chasing the black and they just go around and around and around. Just this one ring in your third eye, inside your third eye is doing this. And there's stress developing in the mind and then um, right here, like right at the back of the crown of the head, like um, stress. I mean, it actually feels like, I don't, are there muscles in there or something? It just feels like tight for some reason. Like, like it shouldn't be tight. I shouldn't be having like a muscle cramp right here in the back of my head. <laughs> it's just kind of a strange place for there to be really, really tense energy like that. All right. You're starting to open up more now. Hold on, this is getting... You're just reacting some more again. So it's almost like things are moving really fast and uh, we're in a roller coaster ride. And, and it's like the, like it's happening too fast. This roller coaster, like suddenly I'm in it, I'm going. I, I didn't even want to be on this roller coaster. Now suddenly I'm in it, I, now I'm on like the roller coaster. And it, it's like, I, but I'm still back there. How am I on a roller coaster now? Stop, wait, wait. It, it's, it's kind of like this. I, this is huge, whatever this is about. I'm literally giving a mega timeout. You're actually in a severe panic about this. I'm timing this out. Oh man, you're, you kind of split off a bunch of times here about this. You're like a splintered bone, but you're splintered soul parts. This is really creating emotional um, in the throat and then coming up around the face and through the eyes and I mean almost shaky to a point <sighs> I'm literally in you like in your body more than I, I normally am and so my hands are your hands and I'm, I'm in your form okay and simultaneously as I'm in your form, I'm, I'm, there's, your energy is so unique and I don't, I don't know how to define the uniqueness of it. It's just the way that you, you're processing reality is different. So for me to be fully emerged within you, 
while also helping these deeper um, quiet voices that are still speaking um, cope with things like this to bring you put you back together again and then bring that light back into you so the echoes aren't there all right it's gonna help a lot so we're in this thing together all right I'm you and you are me we are totally like I mean I can feel your feet I can feel your legs I can feel your hips and feel your form all right and so we're on this roller coaster ride and I'm I'm pointing out to you the visions and images the feelings that I'm getting as we're on this and that we can alter time together and we can do whatever we want with this experience but what we're gonna focus on is helping you to express what you need to express from it help you to release what you need to release and help you to just come full circle so you can appropriately move on you can actually move on in a healthy way harmonious way gosh you're like eight pieces or something stress okay relaxing we're on the roller coaster ride and it's extremely slow all the while I, I experience they're like vibrating like half parts <laughs> so there's like a weird um it's like uh, all right so you know if you have like a leg amputated and then you have the um like ghost leg and so even though you don't have a leg there your foot still itches well how is that possible because i don't have a leg there there's still like an energy body right so uh, even if the leg isn't there but it's like fragmented energy body parts and they're just kind of like twitching like like uh, the chicken just got its head cut off and its body is reacting even though it's not alive technically it can't live without its head properly so you've got these like random energy body parts just like twitching like just scattered about on the side of what is the roller coaster ride where you kind of wait at the platform and now you can get on so we see them over there we're moving away from them and we're going on the roller coaster ride very slow like one mile per hour okay and even when we get to the top we're gonna go down at one mile per hour too we're not gonna go like a hundred miles per hour we're just gonna slowly creep our way along the roller coaster ride I don't know why we have to do it this way but we have to do it this way so <laughs> we're doing it this way uh, they tell me it's, um, it's to help you collect yourself, literally. And when, when, like, when they say it's to help you collect yourself, and um, it's to collect your own mind. It's to to catch up with yourself. Sometimes we get hit with too many things, and we need time to collect ourselves. So they're saying that the roller coaster ride being slowed down now is giving you the time that you need to collect yourself which now we see these little body parts and things we need to collect yourself <laughs> all right but let's just go along this roller coaster ride your heart is beating really really fast even though it's never gonna go faster than this you really like your heart it's like i almost can't breathe and you're getting a bit of an anxiety and uh like kind of a trauma reaction and we're slowly going up a very tall, you know, the tall part of a roller coaster is steep hill. And you just like, get me off of this, get me off of this, get me off of this. And it's almost like I didn't ask for this. I didn't want this. Why am I forced into this experience? Why? Um, so now we're hearing a reaction from this uh, infinite air. And it's expressing um, vibrations in every direction. So I'm, I'm seen now, I'm sitting next to you, and I just put my hand on your hand, and I say, we're in this together. So, so whatever happens to you, I'm, I'm here too, so we'll do this together. <laughs> it's going to be okay. It's going to be totally fine. Some emotions coming out here just literally around the eyebrows and the eyes is just coming out but this stress is uh, relaxing 
just kind of emotion right now. And you tell me, I want to be gone. I want to be off of this. I want to be done with this. And I stop time right then and there. For all eternity, we're going to be at the very top of the roller coaster. And I say, what is it going to take for you to embrace this ride? Because you don't get off the roller coaster here. You have to embrace this ride. Even if it's not fair, even if it wasn't what you wanted, you have to embrace this ride. Gosh, I feel the, the panic. It kind of reminds me of um, my son wanted to go on the log ride and like four years old. And so I, I said, okay, <laughs> this was a little a few years ago, but um, once the thing started to move, there was instantaneous screaming and crying, but there was no getting off of it. You're in this thing till the end now. <laughs> and uh, it's odd, it's like, it's a traumatizing event, you know, and then you feel really bad because you don't want your kids to be traumatized. <laughs> um, so it's reminding me of this. It's a traumatizing event. You have a lot stored up. It, this has got to be out of you. And right now it's kind of like in the heart and it's just sort of um, jumping into the throat and the mind is getting a bit dizzy here. And all we're doing is we're just on a roller coaster at the very top and I'm talking to you about embracing the ride. This messed you up. Um, it messed up some things here for you on the energy side of things. But when we bring this into balance, you're going to feel caught up with yourself and you're going to feel like you've reached um, a new playing field. All right. It's like unresolved stuff. You don't want this. I don't want this. I'm done. I not doing this. You're like getting off the roller coaster simulator right now. <laughs> you know, it's all bogus, just energy. Like you could do whatever you want. So you're like actually getting out of the roller coaster into the air where you're supposed to fall, but you don't. And you're standing there and you're like, I don't want this. <laughs> like, wow, you're really good. How come you know this is a roller coaster simulator? You know that deep down inside, most people don't know that. <sighs> now that I tell you that something um, happens in your mind and you acknowledge that perhaps I do need a roller coaster simulator in order to cope with the real roller coaster experience. And, and you say that you're glad that, that, that it came out like this because you needed to hear that this was a simulator. Because you need a little bit of practice in order to adjust to the, the real memory. Man, I, this is really hard. In your goals, you sound um, so put together and um, strong. But in your energy field, you have unreconciled stuff for sure. And because I can feel the fear and it's not, it's not, it's like um, trauma fear. It's like um, the body was taught in a single moment to resist something it never would have resisted before. Um, the anxiety fear is different than this type of fear. 
So we have to retrain your body and everything to, to remember what normal feels like as far as the I am safe and letting go of the echoes of what was. You're getting back into the roller coaster simulator and you say that you do want to take it all the way around to do this and uh, that we're just going to start as this being a simulator. So I say, okay, sounds good. <laughs> so we're going to go one mile per hour, okay, on the roller coaster simulator, which is a parallel reflection of a real event that was extremely traumatizing for you. So we're just on the roller coaster at the very front here. It's kind of fun to inch your way along the track. <laughs> Such a different experience. Like, you don't, you're not rushing anywhere. You're just like inching along down. And you're like <laughs> looking at the ground. <laughs> you're slowly inching your way down. <laughs> it's actually so cool. I kind of, I think there needs to be a roller coaster for babies like me <laughs> that, that just go inch their way along the entire track because I don't like roller coasters either so okay so we're just inter inching our ways down and <laughs> it's so cool I wish you guys could see this. this is so cool it's actually real for me okay this is a real experience for me <laughs> it's awesome okay <laughs> we still are down the biggest drop of all time like I keep closing my eyes and expecting us to be down and we still aren't <laughs> it's making me laugh so hard. <sighs> okay. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. You are kind of laughing with me now, and you're like, "Yeah, this is really silly, isn't it?" <laughs> I say, "What I don't want is I don't want it to stop. Let's <laughs> let's take this at one mile per hour all the way around, and let's laugh our asses off. <laughs> like, let's not move this to normal pace. Let's just do this because it's really fun." Okay, my spirit, my spirit guides are like um, showing us time passing, <laughs> and it's like taking a very long time to get through this roller coaster ride at one mile per hour. It's like so ridiculously slow. It's so funny. Oh, they tricked you, by the way. We're talking about infinite time, right? So infinite time can be as slow or as fast as you want to perceive it to be, and. You're, this part of you wants to perceive it as slow when in all actual, actuality it is million miles per hour it, it is whatever speed it needs to be in conjunction with the experience because they're showing me um, they're winding up the speed and we're already to the finish line like that like it never like we never even started almost like it never even happened and we're kind of looking at each other like, what? 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 You know, we're kind of doing that right now. So they're going to take us off the roller coaster. We're going to watch the movie of what happened. This is some serious therapy here for you. Um, and we're going to speed it up faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. So you start to realize that it's okay that normal speed is fine, slow speed is fine, abnormal speed is fine, that all of the speeds are actually normal. And they're copable, they're fine. So we're adjusting you to what you already know about infinite time. Because there's something about the intelligence of it too that, that heals you as well. So we're in kind of this like r basic room, like really basic room. There's a monitor. We're just watching the TV and there's like a man with a mustache, like he's an FBI agent or something. <laughs> and he's playing uh, this movie for us and we're watching it. And he's like looking and writing down notes of the psychological reactions to the different paces and speeds. And, and but it's just all showing you here how this therapy is helping you to catch up with yourself. 
this is really helping a lot and you ask if you could um, just slow it down one more time because you want to feel like a vacation from this world for a little bit it's not about the roller coaster what happened or anything like that it's just for your soul it's just something your soul desires and I say is there anywhere you want to go do you want to go we could go anywhere you don't want to go anywhere it's it's like you're already complete you just want time and you're going into that place again with, with the infinite void of just the infinite energy and you're just becoming like water or air and you're just becoming everything you're just becoming everything and you're experiencing it as long as you choose to perceive the experience and you're allowed to experience it forever too and that heals your soul it heals your soul to be gifted this to experience that forever because it is so peaceful for you it feels so natural too but you are okay understanding that you have a divine calling a divine time and place and you feel that you've received what you needed out of that experience and you're ready to return now <sighs> you're wanting to change something here about uh, the roller coaster I still feel remnants of the shaking uh, amputated energy body parts but it's not like at the focal point we're just standing on the platform where all those body parts were kind of shaking and spasming and you're not paying them paying that energy any attention interestingly enough you look different you look um, you have no you have your head shaved like I can see it is shaved and so I can see the roots of every little fiber of your hair and you're elegant looking and you have large blue eyes and you're wearing a, a white but um, it's kind of um, it's not old-fashioned by any means it's something sexier than that like um, it kind of comes down and then it's kind of exposes some just some side views of <laughs> womanly curvature I guess you could say and it just wraps around but it's it's not you don't you're not into that you don't care about that um, the concepts of attractiveness or sexiness or um, any of that this is you you say that like this this is you and you don't even like it's for me to describe this to you uh, so you can see yourself at the conscious level expressing yourself in this way all right but the you that's expressing yourself in this way has nothing to do with this conversation she's just wanting to tell me the next thing and I'm I'm taking up her time <laughs> and telling me the next thing in order to tell you about her <laughs> and her sexiness <laughs> like the curvatures and the stuff and she's just like that none of that matters and that, that it's like so not her it is not at all about that zero and so <laughs> you're kind of like um so can i tell you now and i was like yeah sure sir okay what do you got to say about this roller coaster <laughs> hmm you sit down you're you, you you look slightly different again still the same figure and face but the clothing has changed it's very like ba like baggy but um, fitted at the top white pants and again a cross type of um, shirt
and you have your eyes closed and you're in meditation and you're removing um you're actually taking apart the roller coaster piece by piece by piece by piece by piece and we have all these levitating roller coaster pieces like thousands of them yeah you say uh i know what to do right like you know what you want but then you you kind of say but i get this far and then i can't figure out what the rest of this thing is that i want i feel the inspiration is to do this but i don't know what i'm supposed to do next you tell me this that you need me to help you remember something remember what you're forgetting here I tell you you're trying too hard just let all the pieces drop and I say where do you want to go you get lost again and just want to go back to that space where you just expand forever but you also acknowledge that that isn't that 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 is sort of like um, neglecting your your role here and your role is to do something constructive and when you start doing something constructive then it just like it's like you got a brain fart like I I was I thought I knew what I was doing and then I don't remember what I was supposed to how I was supposed to complete this and you understand the value of balance like not taking advantage of um, this energy vacation and and um, and, and participating in in what is um, finding this missing piece here. Okay. I'm actually exploring different ideas and I'm, I'm, ex I'm exploring how your energy reacts to it. If I take you to a nature scene, for instance, with water and say, why don't we just start with something that you would resonate with vibrationally? This isn't an infinite spirit space, although this image is, technically. It's just an earth simulator. So you're just going to be in a, in a scene here similar to something you could experience in real life and I'm going to explore how that makes you feel and you could get swept away here for a long time and then neglect your purpose which your constructive purpose okay so I feel that I feel that um, But the constructive purpose is, it's like um, continuing to try to figure out the constructive purpose is also, um, it's almost like, it's, it says that's a struggle in its own right. We have the peaceful struggle holding on to that for too long, neglecting the work that must be done. Then we work on the work that must be done and it just, it just none of it just feels right to you it's just none of it is right it's like you have all this extraordinary intelligence in your soul and you want to stay true to your soul's um, what your soul's wisdom is that you've acquired over many lifetimes and you want to stay true to your soul morals kind of thing of balance but it's tough because you don't know how to be balanced in conjunction with what you're juggling here I'm gonna do something that has nothing to do with anything we've seen thus far I'm gonna do this in order to alter the energy and see how it changes things No, you don't. You're you're so different here. Sometimes um, 
showing showing souls just they're getting too absorbed in the same stuff so we got to have you see something that's totally loud and and totally not conforming to any of these things and so i test you by showing you something very scary and you, it's no different you react to it no differently than when you have your like when i'm talking about your outfit it's just that has not you don't even care about that and the scary thing is just you don't even care about that and he's like, but you were traumatized on that roller coaster. So what? What? What do you? What is this scary thing? Like, how come this scary thing doesn't mean anything to you, but that scary thing did? I need you to explain that to me. Ah. All right. So I took you down into your classic torture chamber all right into a dungeony space where they're screaming and saws and scary things all right souls react to this and it helps me to find wounded parts of souls when i do this and so taking you down here and you having no reaction to it is that the stifled shout you're doing again but you're also um reacting to it quietly okay and when I ask you to explain yourself between this one and that one, this torture chamber, and then the roller coaster ride, now I need you to explain what what you mean here, that this isn't scary, that that is scary? Because I think a lot of people would see this was really scary here. I even see that as traumatizing, that... You uh, start to cry. You're you got a total alien roots going on, like super loud ones, and your form melts off, and you look different. I mean, you look alien esque, and you have a tealish color around the top of your head, and your head's quite large, and then you have like a golden brown color that is the rest of your body. Okay. And you're standing with like head and neck and shoulders and arms and legs. So you're standing like that. You don't have any clothes on. I mean, you really are kind of not like um, non-reactive to things. Um, you see with the different type of uh, mind connection. But this alien being part of you does see something that it is reacting to it just doesn't make it very loud and it goes to the person that it sees on the torture chamber bed and it starts to feel very sad about this and you get angry and say why are you doing this and it's not just this simulator all right it's about the human race why is the human race doing this to each other why are they why did they do this or why do they do this to people it makes you really angry and sad and disturbed and i touch you on your shoulder you're quite tall in comparison to me I mean, your face is not like, I mean, it could be akin to a gray alien, but it isn't. It's more, it's big, a big head, and it's um, not like almond shape. And it, there's more ridges to your face, not like smooth. And literally, you're really tall. I mean, you could be eight feet tall here. And so I touch your shoulder and I show you some things that I've learned about energy like this. And the struggle to accept what is unacceptable and how you accomplish that. We take a very long time to look it's a, it is very sad because it's literally a child. I didn't even I didn't even know there was a, like a real form there. It's just the energy or the idea of 
And so he's showing me this. There's just, I mean, it's so, so much stress. It's not like a he or a she. It's just like a thing, like an alien being. God, there's so much stress right now. There's a lot of anger. <sighs> okay, calming down. You're so mad right now about this. You're so disgusted. <sighs> Okay, calming down, calming down. It's okay. You just... There's lots of little beings, um, so literally like two feet tall, and they all look some like identical in a way. They're uh, like gray color, and they're all kind of single file line walking in here to see what this larger one sees so they can try to explore and understand and process the meaning for themselves. It's like a colony of ants in a way, but they don't look like ants. They look like human, I mean humanoid. I don't call that human though, it's different. Oh, they're here to heal this image. They literally are using all their many fingers to put light into it everywhere. And this is very interesting, but all these little beings, they, they turn to light and then they become one and they lay into the body of this little girl. It's like seven years old. Is that you? Is that some part of your experience? Is that why it's a child here? Spirit guides aren't saying anything about that. They're just, we're just using this as a simulator. That's all we know. In order to get you to have re reactions to things, to get into these wounded parts to heal you. So once all those little beings turn to light and they merge together and go within her, she sits up on the table and is looking around and then she looks at this a large alien being and she smiles and reaches her hand out. And the alien being um, picks her up and holds her for a really, 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 really long time. I asked the alien being, what is your relationship with this girl? And it, the alien being says that she is me. This alien being is also you. And it's like this part of you is trying to access its own fragmented parts. And in a weird way, you're like a fragmented part of itself. You're a whole soul, so don't take that the wrong way, okay? But because this being is, I mean, there's something about, it doesn't think or act like a human being, okay? It's really composed, it's really, um, it doesn't have the same vulnerabilities, emotional at all. It doesn't relate to the things that we would laugh about or, or, or say, whoa, or oh my God, uh, react sarcastically to. It just doesn't do that. Um, it just seems to feel like um, that is good or this needs help or, or it's trying to process some of these concepts here. But it's found you and it's wanting to heal you, it's wanting to access other parts of itself, okay, in order to heal itself. Healing you will heal itself, and this alien being is also simultaneously you. Also simultaneously this girl. You needed to hear that. Something is re resetting, like a reset button inside of you, in your f more physical you, okay? <sighs> the, 
that was so huge. Your whole energy field just went <laughs> like a loud, like <laughs> silence all across the cosmos. Like the whole universe heard it just like they're gone, vibrating forever. Your whole energy field just did that. It's like you just, something just clicked here. No idea what it is, but it I can hear it. I can feel that like a reset button was just hit here. I'll tell you what, if you're wanting to start understanding an interdimensional universe. I mean, this session might blow your freaking mind, but this is not the most shocking thing to me, you see. So when you start to choose to open up to awareness of this kind, I mean, this is just the beginning. This is like just the first breadcrumb of what is out there and the awareness that you can experience for yourself not by thinking about it but by becoming a part of it and sometimes when you merge with awareness that your mind cannot understand it can create um it t can take time to, to um energetically catch up all right but you'll catch up unless you don't want to but there's something here too about what your capacity is for understanding concepts like this your capacity is a lot more than the average bear okay so i know i can imagine you have questions about this but give me a second here because you just got to kind of wash some of the energies around the face and mind and the head, okay? You're really exhausted. I mean, you're tired here. So I'm having you standing here on the platform. And now you're looking here at this alien being that is very much like a family energy. Like, um, cares about life. Like, cares about creation and the treatment of creation and the wholeness of it and it's also trying to understand something about itself through its many other selves about creation energy is really slowing down here because you're really exhausted and I'm telling you when the whoomp uh, on and on silence happened it, the reset button moment it's like your whole being is needing uh, to just catch up in a really healthy way here not in a traumatized way but in a way that is creating a new life within yourself, okay? I mean, I'm trying to ask, so what? what is she to do with this now? <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to ask, but it, because the energy is just so like uh, shutting down because it's just like so big, that it, I can't, I have to wait, I can't force energy to just, I can't force it, so all I can do is just say the thing that I just said and expect them to give me an answer here so you have something to work with, but I also have to wait for you as well because you're really... <sighs> Okay, my spirit guides are showing you something that's going to help process all of this. 
Oh, man, they're talking over themselves. It's kind of like, um, let's say you had a dream. I mean, they're kind of, this is, they're saying so many things. So I'm just going to start with this one and see where it leads, okay? They're, they're showing you as a human being. And you had a dream that you weren't human. And you lived an entire life. Is that dream real? Did that dream create a real reality? What if the creation in your own dream was real? And that you birthed that into the universe. And now your dream creation is wanting to find its way back to its creator. And if the dream is merely a dream where it's like where its physical reality is in a different dimension. So to us it would just always be energy, right? It would be like air. Now the dream finds you. Now the dream is trying to understand itself. It longs to heal parts of itself that it is discovering. And they show me you sleeping and the dream creation, which is this extraordinary alien being, comes and sleeps within you. Like a little baby inside your own heart. But its head and its shoulders and everything are kind of in, inside of the outline of your body. And it's like it's sharing um, feelings and ideas with you in a very loving and meaningful way. But when you wake up, it just disappears, vanishes like smoke into the air. It's just... And you wonder if any of that was real. And an odd part of yourself now is coming to life and longing to find the parts of you that it wants to comprehend creation through the eyes of other parts of yourself. It wants to find parts of you, as in you, the human, and want to find parts of yourself, the alien being, this little girl so that you can heal them too. So do you see the interconnected web going on here? There's no difference between one or the other. And they bring this back to the conversation about the infinite is forever. A single second will remain for all time. But that single second can be transformed at any time. It could become extremely slow motion or it could become so fast. But all moments are forever. But there's something about the transformation of what was perceived changes what is and what will be. But it's always going kind of like wanting to rediscover itself over and over again in new ways. They also feel like this would be an it's like they're not saying if this is true or not, but they say that this will give you something to think about. To see this little girl as the past, okay? To see you as the present. To see the alien as a future version of yourself. This will also help you with the process of this. First breadcrumb, all right? <laughs> and your introduction to the interdimensional universe of yourself. Yeah, you have a lot to ponder now.
so I want to tell you something. This is a really hardcore session. 60 minutes of time is like big time life changing. So the energy work here in this session alone is going to be noticeably vibrating for several weeks, okay? And usually, like, for a session this long, you could feel tired too. And usually tired, unexplainably tired for like three to five days. And um, I just need you to know this. I'm still kind of in your energy field as well, so I'm just a little bit like... Um, kooky <laughs> trying to explain some things <sighs> I'm literally just like lay laying your total energy down into a very super soft awesome cozy bed with the best pillow and the best blankets and the best thread counts this world could ever ask for so that you can get the best rehabilitation sleep of infinite time. <sighs> so don't, just let this wisdom and let this energy work process, okay? It's just going to do it all by itself. I already did all the work, so so you just get to reap the reward, all right? <laughs> just contemplate. Just think about whatever you want to think about and let it expand you, okay? There's no such thing as one answer, one path, one way to make sense of something. <sighs> There's billions, infinite, infinite understandings of even a single concept and you're smart enough to understand that okay it's literally all I have to share today this is thank you very 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 much for this amazing experience and the gift of this experience being shared with others it's just It's a pleasure to meet you and to uh, get to connect with you today. And uh, for those watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Okay, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful day.